Daddy, I know a bad word, and it's spelled M-O-M-M-E. In today's video, thanks to the folks over at 3-0, we're going to be having a look at the Bioshock Big Daddy and Little Sister 1-6 scale collectible figure. To get this review started, let's first figure out how tall the figures stand. Why don't we start with the biggest one, and that is Big Daddy. We're going to put it right to the very top, right there. There we go. The figure stands at a very impressive 13.3 inches in height. Switching that over to centimeters, you're looking at the figure standing 33.9 centimeters, about 34 centimeters in height. As for little sister, let's put the tape measure next to her. That's about right there. You know, she actually appears rather small. And yet, if you put the tape measure next to her, she's just shy of being 6 inches in height. 5.7 to be exact. Switching that over to centimeters, little sister stands at 14.6 centimeters tall. The figure set comes included with some instructions, but the instructions are actually more pertinent to Big Daddy than they are Little Sister. Primarily just showing you how to put in and install the batteries underneath the valve lid, and then also how to install the drill to the side of 
daddy's arm, and I'll show you that in a second. Figured we would first have a look at a little sister, or a gatherer, originally named by game developers. Uh, the little sisters are young girls who have been genetically altered and mentally conditioned to reclaim Adam from corpses around Rapture. 3-0 has done a really great job here of capturing exactly how the sisters look in Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2. She's sporting here a daisy flowered dress, almost the coloring of uh, like a pink, a very dark, dark pink. I think what also aids in making the dress look old is the fact that they've torn and ripped it up. And they've also added some dirt and it uh, looks like they've just kind of dirtied it up with a little bit of additional brown or gray paint. Um, it does really do. It does look like something that was like a vintage dress that you would have pulled out from like an attic somewhere. Especially loving the fact that it's got the little rips and stuff up in the sleeves. But the smallest of details, such as like buttons and whatnot, are all stitched into the top there. And stitching is very clean on little sister's dress. One can't certainly overlook the fact that she is a slightly malnourished, dead sort of discoloration. 3-0 has done a great job on that. Even like discoloring the areas underneath her feet, places of which you're not generally going to be looking at the figure because she's going to be standing on those. And yet they've done a great job of sculpting the larger toe as well as the individual smaller toes there as well, adding some darker, almost borderlining a dark gray in between the paint of the individual toes there. Having a look at her head, I really love the head sculpt here. Not only do you get the dark, dark coloring of this off gray in her skin tone, but because they've given the eyes a game accurate coloration here of the orange, really does make the eyes look like they're popping, almost pulsating a glow, a bright glow light. The hair is in a ponytail, of none of which has any posability to it. And there's these little side strands of hair coming down, just sticking their way out and draping down just in front of the little sister's ears. Again, I really think that they've done a great job of painting the face here. If you can see it, there's almost like a speckling, like they would have gone there with a very small paintbrush, giving darker colors around the areas around the eyes, slightly lighter colors around the areas of the cheeks, and then darker colors again around the lip area. And I like that they've d put a very dark line in between the bottom lip and the top lip there. We'll go through her posability, and then we'll have a look at the accessories that come included with Little Sister. So her head rotates all the way around, the frilled top collar of her dress luckily doesn't get in the way of it. And I do feel like there's a good range of accessible poses that you can move the head into, right down to the very creepy head tilt. That's always something I like doing with a lot of these figures. Like I said, the head rotates all the way around, not restricted at all. Speaking of not restricted, I like that despite for the fact that she's got these poofier sleeves in her dress, it doesn't limit at all what you can do with the arms. You can move them out, you can move them forward, you can move them back. About the only time that you might come into some problem is where you start doing a full rotation. I can't see why you would want to do a full rotation, but if you do, just keep in mind that the fabric on the sleeves are going to start wrapping and, and getting tighter which e with each rotation. So it's going to kind of give you an abruptly abrupt stop in which it's telling you don't want to move the arm any bit further than that. If I move up the sleeve just a little bit, she does have a swivel, and the swivel is attached to the bicep area of the figure's arm, giving you a good range of motion there as well. Now, she does bend at the elbow. You can see that there's just a singular hinge happening right there. As well, she has also a singular hinge here. Well, a uh, rotation, I should say, here in the wrist. The only thing that she doesn't have, she can't rotate here. If you start bending and rotating it at the point where the elbow moves further down into the forearm, it just won't be able to do that. All the hinge, all the swiveling is happening right up here. Again, enough that you can get some poses and different unique ways to display the figure. Especially when you start incorporating Big Daddy into the picture. Now the waist swivels doesn't does have a little bit of a crunch I should say the legs split but as you could probably guess it they do feel a little on the confined side when you move them really to this point and beyond the dress skirt the lower part of the dress is just too tight and not that you really would want to move her legs further out than that but that's as far out that you can stretch them 
Legs move forward and back. Just have a good sufficient bend in the knee. And sort of the same thing as the elbows. You can bend the elbow, but you can't rotate. Same in the knee here. You can bend the knee, but you can't rotate it. The rotation actually happens right up here, not down here. So you just want to be careful that when you are rotating it, you're not rotating here. It's going to it's gonna cause damage to the knee. And then finally, she has a hinge in the foot, which also allows the foot to rotate. And if somebody enjoys ankle pivot, then the little sister can also ankle pivot there in the ankle as well. Very poseable figure for its size of the two. Big Daddy does have as much, yeah, I think he has 30 points of articulation, but I feel like Little Sister is a little bit more flexible with what you can do with her. And there's Little Sister. For her accessories, she doesn't come with many, but she comes with ones that you would expect a character like Little Sister to have if you've played Bioshock. She does come with the Atom Syringe, which is very nicely presented here. I like that they've oxidized the brass or metal uh, handle as well as the syringe portion here. But the only thing that remains relatively unscathed is the bottle that sits up at the top, which has a slightly translucent plastic. You can see my finger, my fingers running behind it. Sort of like a gas pump with a syringe on the end does fit into her hand, although it doesn't fit into her hand currently with the spread hands that I've got with her. These hands are really more best suited for just kind of displaying her standing on her own, or if she wants to be like grabbing onto a Big Daddy, you can also just kind of sort of have her resting onto parts of Big Daddy. We'll look at that in a second. But she does also come with the uh, these gripping hands. Let me just get her stand here. There we go. She does also come with these gripping hands, which are bet it's better suited for holding the Adam syringe, and let me just get that properly into her hand. There we go. And she can hold it like that. One thing I do like, though, is that they have given her rubber hands, or slightly softer hands. This makes bending and manipulating the hands around the bars, say, for example, of Big Daddy, or really just getting them around uh, the, the Adam syringe, or at the very least, just taking them off of the peg. Because they are softer, it's a lot easier, I find, just to take the hands completely off without feeling as if I'm going to, in the process of doing that, take the peg off as well. And you just pop the new hand in place. Go ahead and take the syringe. And you can see the way, way they've done it. You can you just get the fingers all the way around. You can get them around the little... Uh, the little lever there, but it does take a little bit of prying the fingers out to do that. Just like that, as you can see. And a lot of this really is aided for the fact that the fingers are soft rubber. Um, if you were do, doing this with a harder plastic, it would be much more difficult to pull this off. So in that way, I'm actually happy that they did use softer plastic hands rather than you know, regular dense plastic. It just would be a lot more of a hassle to get her hands around the, the, the actual lever like I've got right here. Then we look at the big boy, Big Daddy, that comes included with Little Sister. And for every Little Sister, of course, she's going to have an accompanying guardian with Big Daddy. Now, Big Daddy does have some battery light-up options. However, you do need to buy your batteries in order to do that. They don't include it when you pick up this set for yourself. What you need is AG13 batteries, three in total, and you can also, uh, primarily, they're easier to find if you look them by LR44. I think that's generally most of the larger named batteries usually label them as LR44s. So if you can't find AG13s, LR44s will work just as well. And you need three of these. They're not overly expensive batteries. I mean, these are not high-named batteries. They're not like the Energizers, the Duracells, for example. And I think each one of these batteries cost me about a little shy of $3 a piece. So that works out to be under $10 to get the batteries for Big Daddy. Let me show you where the battery compartment is located. So the larger tank on the back of Big Daddy is the valve. You're gonna go ahead and just grab this and take the lid right off. While it doesn't screw in place, nor does it have a notch to tell you which way it fits in, I do find that the shape of this, the ring on the interior here has a certain way of fitting in place. You can't just put it in any which way. 
um, as soon as you start rotating, you'll see, see right off the bat. I guess it's a little flatter on this side than it is on this side here. So when you put back, are putting it back in place, there is a specific direction that it has to face. But you take that off and we spin it around. Here's the little compartment. We open that up. I've already gone ahead and installed the AG13 batteries. And then there's three different settings, or I guess you really wouldn't know that, but there is more than just an on and off switch. I'll replace the battery cover. So there are three different colored settings. You have off, and then you have three settings from there. I'll just switch through them so that you can see. I'll put up Big Daddy right there. And then I'll cycle through the individual uh, the individual switch options. And I'll show you which ones are which. So we switch it to the first setting, like that. And then we have red. Now red in the game indicates rage towards assailants. So for example, that's the color of Big Daddy that you probably would want to stay away from. And that's the first setting when you hit the switch, the switch right here. Then you're gonna set it to the second setting. And there's a stopping point. When you are moving it, you kind of feel it catch. And then that, that way you know where the color is gonna to set to next. So when you bring it to the next setting, there we go, it sets it to green. Now green indicates that the Big Daddy is hypnotized and friendly. There's probably the coloring that you would wanna see for Big Daddy. And then the last setting, switch it to the end and that is the yellow. Now, the yellow would indicate awareness, but indifference to his environment. Now, this is sort of like the yellow light, borderlining red. This is probably an indication to you that you would want to be staying clear of Big Daddy because the last thing you would certainly want him to do is switch to red. I'm curious as to why they reversed, in my feelings at least, why they reversed the colors. I almost feel as if like green should have been the first one and then as you cycle through, green here is in the middle and then yellow is on the end. I suppose it doesn't really matter either way, but my my mind looking at this, I think it's backwards. I feel like, like green should have been the first one, then yellow, then red. But it's first red, then green, and then finally yellow. The lights end up projecting through eight individual circled openings there on the main helmet of Big Daddy. And it really does look very nice. I think what also adds to it is much like the aging that we're going to look at the rest of his body. Even like those openings there, you can see that they're slightly more murkier. They're not very clear. In fact, you can almost barely make out where the light source is coming from, other than to know that the light is coming through those openings here. It's a pretty good time to look at the other accessories that come included with the larger Big Daddy, and one of which being the drill attachment that's going to attach to this arm. And I'll show you how that works in a second. I don't want to take anything though away from the paint that 3.0 has applied to this drill. It really does look good. In fact, it looks like it's got layers of wear and tear to it, where you've got the lighter coloring of the metal that's just been really just worn down. And then you've got darker areas here as well. You almost can even see where the drill has been hammered out almost very crudely but a really nice paint job here on the drill. This is how it's gonna to attach to the hand. There are four openings, four opened holes here, and then a cog shape in the middle. I'll show you that in a second. The other thing that he comes included with is a relaxed palm. This opened glove is a good support for if you wanna display him with Little Sister. And I sort of gave you a couple of examples of how you can display it in the opener of this review, but she sort of just sits against the hand like that. And she can support herself by also holding on to the side of the cage, the roll cage on the front of Big Daddy. And again, I'll show you that in a second. But this hand is better suited for sort of supporting her, whereas the close fist is really better, it's better suited for if you want to just have it displayed all on its own. And I'll show you that in a second as well. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to this drill. So like I said, this is the way that it's going to attach in place. The instructions show that you pretty much just line it up on the hand and snap it into place. And it's very easy to do it like that. One thing you can also do too as well is say you're having a difficult time of actually plugging it into place. One thing I was doing as well was just popping it right off of its ball joint. All it is is just a ball joint and a ball socket attaching this to this. And once you line it up here on this side, 
you can kind of really just, I mean, you can line them up. There's the cog. See how it has the, the two prongs on the top, the one at the bottom has to line up in here and you just fit it in place like this. Or what you can also do too is just keep rotating it until it eventually stays in place and it stays perfectly in place. And just getting a quick look at the main apparatus here. The part that's gonna to attach to his arm, very nicely painted. Combination of different colors of the darks, dark black, the dark gray, and of course the silver. And going back, there's the socket once again. We can just attach that back to his ball joint. And this also allows posability in the arm. You can move it, not quite the arm, but the drill part itself, you can move it back and forth. Now the thing is though, it is a little on the heavier side. So when you are starting, say for example, to move daddy's arm up, you might find the drill pop just leans its way down. It's just because it's, it's sticking out a considerable amount of extra space that bringing the arm up, sometimes it does drop down in the process, but it's never to the point where it's gonna droop completely down. As for this hand, now this one's a little bit more trickier. You take it off as you would with the drill attachment, and here's the two different hands to show you. Side by side, the closed fist and the open hand. Love the texturing that they've added to this as well. It's almost like a burlap texturing and some stitching there on the, the top area of its hand. And when you were replacing this one, this ring, to show you here, is loose. It comes off all on its own, as it should be, as well as this one right here. It's a simple fix. They slide them just up onto the sleeves. But it does come into one problem that you're going to be facing, and that's when you're putting this hand back into place. I find, make, just make sure that the arm is straight and that the ball joint is as much sticking out as you possibly can get it. You can, might even want to push the rings up a little bit. And then once enough of that is exposed, you can very easily get the hand in place. Sometimes though, when you are bending the arm, it's just by the fact that you're, you're reducing the length of the forearm that sometimes when you are bending the arm up, it has happened a couple times for me already that the hand does pop off. As you saw, it's very easy to replace back, in the, back into its place because it's simply just sitting on top of a ball joint. Now we spent so much time looking at Little Sister and Big Daddy's accessories that we've yet to look at the figure itself. Ever since Bioshock first came out, I've fallen in love with the design of Big Daddy and Little Sister. I've always really liked this design as a whole, and funny enough that I would introduce this as an example into this review. But it think I think it harks back to Scooby-Doo. The original Submariner, the underwater deep sea diver ghost that Scooby-Doo encounters, does have a, like a very similar look to this. Also, it's got more of a vintage look to it as well, which I think also adds to the reasoning why I love this design so much. Now the suit, if you will, is comprised of fabric. The legs, the arms, and what you would be able to make out in there if not for the, the helmet uh, being over top of it, the whole torso is also made up of this fabric. Now they've added some additional padding to it. Underneath that, you still have posability, uh, which we will have a look at in a second. Some nice full ratcheted joints happening in the legs and the arms and whatnot. But over top of that, they've added some additional padding just to fill out the thickness of the legs. They've also done the same thing for the arms. Um, but again, you still have a full range of motion, all of which we will talk about in a second. But then over top of the fabric, this sort of olive colored green fabric, are these additional uh, ringlets and additional little links that they've added over top of the figure. He's got the knee pads there as well. Looking at its giant, giant boots, I love the riveted front caps, the top caps there of the boots, and we can flip it upside down. There's three zero underneath there. But what the common trend that you get for a lot of Big Daddy's design, both in the game and here in the figure form, is that it's give, they've given him this nice oxidization here on the feet. The feet are almost the coloring of like a goldish, very goldish sort of bronze color. And then over top of that, they've added the oxidized coloring of the greens and the blacks. This holds true a little bit more than when you start looking at the domed helmet, which is a very big and bulky piece on top of the figure as well. Not to mention, of course, that he's got the apparatus sitting on the back there as well with the tank in place. Now, looking at the helmet, 
you can see that it's a combination of the, like the coppers, the bronzes, but it's really the paint that sells this for me. Slightly lighter, lighter shade. Let me just slide it back a little bit here. It's a slightly lighter shade of gold here on the front roll bar, almost like a roll cage there on the front of Big Daddy's main helmet. This section here is more of a closer coloring to a silver or gold, where then the rest of the the main the main helmet behind it is more the darker gold bronze color. Now there's a couple of little areas that little small touches that I really do like. These little fastened points on the sides of the helmet, these little tightening fasteners, which I do have to tell you are not something that you can remove. It's simply just sculpted in place. Don't actually try to turn those. Here running down the bottom here is some nice riveted areas in which the this whole thing would have been built. Um, let me just flip it around to the side here and I'll actually move his arm up just so it's a little easier to see. There is a belt that runs around the full parameter of him and is bolted into the back of this harness here. The tanks here are a slightly dark, darker color as well, almost closer to something like a black, although if you tilt it a certain way, it seems to come across a little bit more like a dark brown. Much like the roll bar on the front, you've got that gold band band that runs around the front area here. As you can see, it sort of is where the tank clamps on to the side here. Bringing the camera all the way in, you can see how areas of the Big Daddy's helmet, for example, have been welded in place and almost even crudely hand forged. As you can see there with the indentations there of the plating. Again, you've got some riveted areas here on the sides. It looks like one of one of them actually is missing intentionally, of course. And then right on the side, you can see where the harness here, the back section of the harness, has been bolted into the side shoulder opening here. So let's have a look at the Big Daddy's posability. I've also switched him over to red. We'll go through the shoulders and then we'll have a look at his legs. So his arms, despite for the fact that it does have as much padding as there is, you still can feel that there's a socketed joint right in there. In fact, there's the socket and then the ball joint sitting in top inside of that. So you can move his arms out and you can move them forward and back like that. This is something that will happen a lot. So I'm just gonna leave the hand off for the time being just to show you. The arms move forward and back like I said, out, it does have a bend at the elbow. Now again, the problem with it though, is when you are bending the elbow, you can hear the ratchet joint right there. And there's the arm. It's essentially like a six scale figure, just, just a lot bigger. I love the clicking noises of the ratchet joint. So like I said, you do have the bend in the elbow. The arm moves out, forward and back. Um, what will end up ultimately happening, though, is as you are bending the, the elbow, these rings are going to get closer together because, again, the length of the forearm is going to shorten. And then you may find that the hand in the process of that pops off. So, again, you just want to just kind of hold on to the forearm, wiggle that back into place. There we go. And then the hand itself, being that it's also on a ball joint, can move back and forth and can rotate all the way around. The same thing sort of holds true on this side. Arms move out, you can move them forward, you can move them back, nice ratcheted joint. And being that this is also ball joint, you can move the drill back and forth like this. And in some ways you can also rotate it as well. His legs move out, you can also move them forward and back. Although it doesn't feel as much like, because there's no clicking joint when you are moving the feet, or the legs, I should say, it doesn't almost feel like it's holding the pose that you've got it in until you realize, yeah, the legs are moving, you're just not getting the ratchet sound that goes with it. Um, down by the lower leg, you can bend the leg here. And the bend is actually just below the knee, the knee guard here. So when you are bending it, it actually, you feel as if it should be bending here, but it's actually bending right underneath it. And then as for the feet, the feet rotate, hinge them back and forth. There's no real ankle pivots, but you can still rotate, like I said, the boots all the way around. 
You know, to be perfectly honest, what got me interested in Bioshock wasn't the gameplay, it wasn't the backstory or the story in which the game is revolving around, it was solely sitting on the shoulders of this massive behemoth known as Big Daddy. When I saw images of this guy first online, I immediately was interested in picking up and playing the game. And I did pick up and I did play the game, but I didn't play as much of Bioshock 1 as I would like, and a little bit less of Bioshock 2, because, oh right, yeah... I can't play first-person sh uh, shooters, which is the problem that I find I experience every single time I play any first-person shooter, I get a little bit nauseous. So while I had to unfortunately abandon all hopes to discovering the world of Rapture, I can at least benefit from discovering Big Daddy here from the likes of 3-0. 3-0 have done a great job of giving us both Big Daddy and Little Sister, such iconic characters of the Bioshock world, and I think they've done a great job on both of them. I've always been a big fan of the old vintage Deep Sea Diver helmet costume, as I think a lot of it can be stemmed once again to Scooby-Doo as the source of my love for this character. I like that 3-0 has given you the light-up options, the interchanging of the three different colors, the green, the yellow, and the red on his front of his helmet, and Little Sister is done right to looking like she was taken right from the game. She comes included with her Atom Syringe, which is really the only accessory one would expect to come included with a Little Sister. Interchangeable hands are a nice touch. And speaking of interchangeable hands, my only frustration comes for the figure's hand on Big Daddy. Bending the elbow, as one would it probably expect it, the hand does pop off a little bit too frequently, but I find the best way to work around that is bend the elbow first, get the hand and the arm in place the way you want to have it displayed, and then pop the hand in place. This final look is likely how I'm going to be displaying the figure. Of course, you're going to have Big Daddy looking over and protecting the little sister in only a way that 3-0 could have done. A really nice sculpted figure, immaculate details on paint, and a really neat behemoth that has light-up options. It's everything you would want here in a six-scale figure release. Now, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, unfortunately, Big Daddy is sold out in many online stores. I would have suggested you can head over to 3-0, but unfortunately, he's sold out over there as well. By the way, by the way, price point on both the figures collectively as they come together, you're looking, you would have looked at 280 US dollars. Now, think of it this way. Looking at this figure and how big he is, and for the fact that you get a little sister, $280 is a really great price for getting this figure the way, the big size that he is. But like I said, the best way to find them, you may have to start doing some searching online because many markets, many online stores have sold out, unfortunately, on, get on this guy. But I would highly recommend it if you guys are a fan of Bioshock or just like me, you like the game, you just can't, unfortunately, play it because of first-person sickness. <sighs> Either way, today's video, we were having a look at the new 3-0 Bioshock. This was the Big Daddy and Little Sister six-scale figure release. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other 3-0 figure reviews, there's a playlist designated just for that. And hey, while you're at it, why not swing over to the home page and check out the video section? It's the best way to guarantee that if anything has been posted up to this point or beyond, you'll never miss out. And like I said, guys, we're going to have a look at some more 3-0 releases in some coming videos, so stay tuned for that. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.